Hola y bienvenidos a este video donde vamos a hablar sobre los diferentes miembros de la familia. Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about the different members of the family. So that means learning the Spanish words for mum, dad, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, grandparents, all of those different words so we're going to extend our vocabulary when talking about family, but we're also going to learn how to put them into really nice long extended sentences, giving extra details and using connectives so that we can really improve our speaking and writing on this topic. Los retos de esta clase son Aprender las palabras para los diferentes miembros de la familia Aprender cómo decir quién hay en tu familia Y poder formar frases más largas usando conectivos Now let's start off with some key vocabulary that you're going to need later on. So before we even learn the words for mum, dad, sister, brother, and, and all of the different members of the family, the first word I want us to have in mind is tengo, which for many of you this may not be a new word, you might already know this, but if it is a new word we really need to make a mental note of that, or even better if you've got a pen and paper you can note down physically. Tengo, and that means I have. Now we could also say, en mi familia hay... In my family there is. Now careful with the pronunciation here because I, H-A-Y, is pronounced a bit like the English word for I. Um, so the H is always silent, I, and you can remember I as a way to uh, remind yourself of how to pronounce that. So we've got tengo, I have, in mi familia I, in my family there is, and that H is always silent. The H is always silent in Spanish. Now hopefully we're familiar with the idea that in Spanish nouns have genders, they're either masculine or they're feminine, and generally, and it's not always the case, but a lot of the time, the O ending, if there's an O on the end of a noun, that often means that it's masculine, and if there's an A on the end of a noun, quite often that means it's feminine. Now there are loads of nouns in Spanish that end in something other than O or A, but there are also hundreds, if not thousands, that do follow this pattern, so it's a good way to think about this. Most of the time, if it ends in O, it's masculine, if it ends in A, it's feminine. Now, if we want to talk about, for example, a family member who's male, we might want to talk about my brother. Instead of saying the brother or a brother, we might want to use what's called a possessive adjective. Words like my, your, his, her. Now, thankfully, the word for my in Spanish is always the same for singular nouns. It doesn't change for masculine and feminine, so it's just me. If you use the word for the, it does change. So the brother, we'd need to use the word el. If we want to say the sister, because it would be feminine, it would be la. And then finally, the other thing we need to know how to say today is the word for a or an, which is un for the masculine and una for the feminine. Except for the words for parents, most key family member nouns follow this pattern of o ending or a ending. It's really nice, actually. You'll see that in, in English, brother and sister, they're very different words. But in Spanish, it's pretty much the same word. We just change the o for brother to an a for sister. So let's jump in with our first family member. Padre means father. Padre. So if we were to say a father, it would be un padre. The father would be el padre. My father would be mi padre. So padre can mean father or dad. And we've also got this word papa, which can mean dad as well. Different places, different regions, different countries use one more than the other. In Spain, padre is super common. Lots of people would, though, call their dad papá to his face and maybe talk about him to someone else as mi padre. Um, be careful with papá. Make sure you kind of accentuate the last syllable, papá. Because if you say papá, it means potato. Now, like I said before, mother and father, mum, dad, they don't follow that O changes to A pattern that the rest do. But they do have a pattern. Let's see if you can spot what the pattern is. So mother is madre. Madre. So hopefully you've noticed padre, father, madre, mother. We're just changing the P for an M. Okay, so they rhyme. So there is still a bit of a pattern there between these two words. And similarly to papa, we've also got mamá. Okay, so madre, mother, mamá, mum. Now there's another pattern for talking about stepmother and stepfather. So, madre is mother, madrastra is stepmother. So, the rule for step, for saying sort of step in Spanish, is you take off the last letter and then you add astra for women and girls and astro for men and boys. And that means that stepfather, instead of padre, take off the e and we add astro, so we get padrastro. Okay, there's a lot of 
tongue rolling in that one because we've got the dr and then the tr sounds padrastro padrastro okay so it might take a bit of practice to to get your mouth around that one padrastro stepfather or stepdad now we're on to all the kind of the, all the normal ones in the sense that from here on out all of the words are going to follow the o or a ending so if we've got the male version with an o we just change it for an a to get the female version so sister is hermana remembering that the h is always silent in spanish hermana and that means that brother is you guessed it hermano so we just change that a for an o it's nice and easy it's easier than english if you think about for someone learning english as a second language um, sister and brother there's no connection between those two words they're nothing alike whereas hermano and hermana it's basically the same word we just need to change one letter on the end now think back to just now when we talked about the pattern for saying like stepmother and stepfather madre became madrastra padre became padrastro so hermana sister to say stepsister that's going to become hermanastra and brother, hermano, to say stepbrother, that's going to become hermanastro. Okay, so really nice patterns in Spanish that we can follow. So once you know, uh, once you know mom and dad, you then just need to remember the astro, astra endings to get to stepmom, stepdad. And once you know hermano, you also know hermana, just swap that O for an A. And then we know astro, astra for the stepbrother and stepsister. So it's nice and easy, you just need to spot the patterns, remember the endings, and the rest will fall into place. Now let's move on to uncles and aunties. Again, the word uncle and the word auntie or aunt in English, there's no connection, but in Spanish, it's it's like the same word again with an O ending or an A ending. So auntie is tía and uncle is tío. Okay, just O for masculine, A for feminine. It's the same with cousin. Now in English, cousin is kind of like a gender neutral word. We don't really talk about male cousin, female cousin. But in Spanish, the ending kind of tells us that. So we've got primo, is a male cousin, and a female cousin then is, you guessed it, prima. Primo, prima. Tío, tía. Moving on to grandparents. Grandma, granddad, we've got abuelo, which is granddad, abuelo. We just need to swap that O for an A and we get abuela, grandma. Now, if you want to talk about grandparents together, Spanish it's kind of sexist, it defaults to the masculine. So it becomes abuelos. Los abuelos, the grandparents. Mis abuelos, my grandparents. If I say mis abuelas, I'm talking about just my grandmothers. So the masculine sometimes in Spanish is used to talk about a group that has kind of men and women in it, as is the case with grandparents. Now, some people have tried to make Spanish a bit less sexist, by using the at sign. In Spanish it's called la arroba. The reason being that people kind of think that it's an A inside an O, so it's a good way of representing the masculine O ending as well as the feminine A ending. Um, so that's something you might see cropping up in, in when you see Spanish, especially on social media and places like that. Now in this picture we've got a couple of twins, and to say twins, if it's two boy twins it would be gemelos, and if it's girl twins it would be gemelas. Okay, so I've used the at sign here. I'd read that as gemelos y gemelas. Okay, so you tend to read it twice. Once with the O ending, once with the A ending when you see that, that at sign. And it's not something that's formal. It's not something you'd probably see on like something that's really like in a newspaper or something from the government. It's more things that people use on social media and in text messages to be more inclusive. So if this girl were to say, my brothers are twins, she'd say, mis hermanos son gemelos. So mis, so mi for one becomes mis, becomes plural, hermano becomes hermanos, so we add an s to make it plural, and then son means are. And this guy would say mi hermano y yo somos gemelos. My brother and I, we are twins. Now it's also useful to know the word for son and daughter, especially because we use this word to say I'm an only child. We say I'm an only son or I'm an only daughter. So to say son, it's hijo, remembering that the H is always silent. Hijo, hijo. And again, O changes to A, daughter is hija. Hijo, hija. 
So to say I'm an only child, if you're a boy, you'd say soy hijo único, almost like I'm a unique son. Soy hijo único, or if you're a girl, soy hija única. Now across the world there's a growing kind of demand for using inclusive language to represent people who identify as non-binary, which means they don't feel either male or female. Now in Spanish, because it's such a gendered language, this is a bit more difficult perhaps than in English, where our adjectives, for example, they're just gender neutral anyway. Um, but people have come up with very, various different ways to make Spanish a bit more gender inclusive. So let's have a look at these cartoons by Terry Blass. First we've got Hi, I'm Latino, that means from Latin America, with an O ending, and she says Hola, I'm Latina. Okay, so we've got the O ending, the A ending. And for those guys that's perfectly fine because he identifies as male, she identifies as female. But then if we go down we've got I don't identify with either gender, and I'm gender fluid. What are we supposed to use? So people have come up with different ways to address this problem. The, the at sign is kind of less sexist because it doesn't default to the masculine, it kind of shows the masculine and the feminine, but it's still very binary, it's still kind of this or that. So people have also come up with the X, you might see like Latin X used, but that's quite hard in, in, in spoken Spanish. So the best and now the, probably the most popular solution is to use the E ending. So we've got O for masculine, A for feminine, and the E is used for non-binary or to be kind of gender neutral when you speak. So, for example, amigos would become amigas. And we'll look at how we can use this now for talking about different family members who may define themselves as non-binary or gender fluid. So let's imagine the person in this picture identifies neither as male or female, they identify as non-binary. If we wanted to refer to them as a sibling, so in English we've got this lovely word sibling, which doesn't mean brother or sister, it's, it's just someone who is also a child of our parents, but who is any gender, essentially. In Spanish, instead of hermano or hermana, if we use that E ending, we could also say hermane. So we could talk about a non-binary sibling, hermane. If they were a step-sibling, we could take the astro, astra ending and change it to astre. Hermanastre, a non-binary step-sibling. If they were a cousin, again in English, English is a wonderful language for being gender inclusive because like the word cousin, it doesn't have any gender connotations. In Spanish we could say prime instead of primo, prima. For a parental sibling, which is the best way to say, you know, uncle, auntie, and then someone who is a sibling to one of your parents, but they identify as non-binary, we could talk about them not as tío or tía, but as tíe. And finally, a non-binary grandparent, we could refer to as abuele. So it's really simple. We know the O ending, we know the A ending, we're just adding a third ending into the mix. And we can also use that with adjectives. So if I want to say tired, estoy cansado, I'm tired. If I were a woman, I'd say estoy cansada. And if I were non-binary, I could say estoy cansade. So the E ending is really useful for making Spanish a more um, inclusive language. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please do hit that like button below. It really means a lot to me to know that people find these videos useful. And if you don't want to miss out on any of the future videos that I'll be posting, please do hit that subscribe button as well. So now we should know a fair few family member names in Spanish, and we know how to use the O ending, the A ending, and also the non-binary E ending. And if we think back to the start of the video, we learned how to say I have, tengo, and in my family there is, in mi familia hay. So let's put all that together and see what we can come up with. We could say something like, tengo un padre y una madre. I have a father and a mother. So y means and, and that's our most basic connective. And it allows us to then talk about two family members instead of just one at a time. Because it's very clunky to say, tengo un padre, tengo una madre, tengo un hermano, and so on. So we can use connectives to make our speaking and writing flow a lot, a lot more naturally. We could also say, tengo una hermanastra y dos hermanos. So making hermano plural, we just stick an S on the end. So this means I have a stepsister and two brothers. Tengo una hermanastra y dos hermanos. Now if we use the other phrase that we learned, en mi familia hay seis personas. In my family there are six people. And then we could do a colon and introduce those people. En mi familia hay seis personas. Mi hermana. 
mis dos hermanos, mi madre, mi padre y yo. In my family there are six people, my sister, my two brothers, my mum, my dad and me. Now we can extend our speaking and writing even further by adding extra details such as people's names and ages. So I can add on, once I've said I have a brother or I have a, an uncle, I can add on to that. Que se llama? Who is called? So K is a really useful connective. It can mean who if we're talking about a person, and it can also mean that and which. I could give that age. I could say I have an uncle que tiene 40 años, who is 40. And remember in Spanish, we don't say someone is their age. We say they have so many years. So literally it means who has the number of years. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples of how we could do this. I could say something like tengo un hermano que se llama Pedro. I have a brother who is called Pedro. I could then add on, y tiene ocho años. So we're using our other connective, and. And he is eight years old. Literally, he has eight years. Now, the final thing I'm going to teach you to allow you to give even more detail in your speaking and writing is how to say younger and older. So you can talk about having an older brother or a younger sister or whatever it may be. So if we're talking about a younger sibling, we'd use the adjective menor. And if we're talking about an older sibling, we'd use the adjective mayor. Now, because menor y mayor are adjectives, they go after the noun in Spanish. Whereas in English, we put the adjectives before the nouns. So younger sibling in Spanish, literally, we'd say sibling younger. So if I wanted to say younger brother, it would be hermano menor, younger sister, hermana menor, a younger non-binary sibling, hermane menor. Because they end in consonants, we don't need to worry about changing the ending. So there's no... Um, O's and A's for us to change on menor and mayor. So it's nice and easy to start using those. Now to practice everything that we've gone through in this video, I've put together this paragraph of text in Spanish. And I've also included the word también, which means also. So we've got lots of connectives, we've got lots of details, whether they're younger, older, their names, ages, and things like that. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to read through this, and I want you to try and translate, whether it's in your head or on paper, what this means into English. Tengo un hermano menor que se llama Pablo y tiene ocho años. También tengo una hermana mayor que se llama Marta y tiene 29 años. Now, if you need to pause the video to translate that, please do so now, and then when you're ready, push play. Okay, so let's go through. We should have, I have a younger brother who's called Pablo, and he's eight, or he's eight years old. I also have an older sister who's called Marta, and she's 29, or 29 years old. Now, after this video, what you can do if, you, if you're up for it is to take a pen and some paper or do it in your class book if this is part of your homework and you can write your own paragraph about your family using this as a bit of a structure, a bit of a template, talking about whether your siblings are older, younger, giving people's names, giving their ages. It doesn't just have to be siblings. I could say, Tengo una madre que se llama Cristina y tiene 50 años. Talk about my mother. I could talk about uncles, aunties whichever family members you like. So you could do a really nice, long, um, detailed, extended piece of writing on this. And then what you could do is you could also practice reading that out loud to practice your pronunciation. Before you go, I'm just going to quickly explain how to make the most of using Spanish with James. If you head over to the main channel, you'll find on the landing page that there are lots of different sections. There's a section for beginner Spanish with all of the beginner's level videos. There's one for intermediate Spanish, advanced Spanish, and there's one for poetry as well. So it's all nicely organized so that you can find the videos that are right for you at where you're at on your Spanish journey. And again, if you haven't already done so, it'd mean a lot if you just very gently click that subscribe button. And that brings us to the end of the video. Muchísimas gracias por ver este video y espero que te vaya muy bien con el español.